But thank you. Arthur Brown maintained his innocence to the end, yet he never acknowledged nor even looked at the six family members of the victims who witnessed his execution. Yes, it's a night that it's not to be happy. And yet we're still sad because our loved ones aren't ever going to come back. Rachel Tobar survived a massacre that led to the deaths of four people in 1992. Six people were bound with bed sheets and shot in the back of the head. Tobar and a family friend survived. Her husband, Jose, her son, Frank Farias, her seven-month pregnant daughter-in-law, Jessica Quinones, and a family friend, Audrey Brown, were killed. Rachel Tobar identified Arthur Brown as one of... <laughs> That son man went in there was on Brito's house, tied six people up with bed sheets and shot them all in the back of the head and still was only four for six. <laughs> he, still, he still was four for six. He couldn't get, like, God damn, man. Even in that case. It Close came, name. Jesus Christ. He's still shooting 66% from the field, man. God damn. It's just, something ain't right, man. It just ain't right, man. Wow. But um, yeah. And 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 um, and this happened in '92, and he's just getting executed um the other day. This is what I we I think Fabian was talking about this, and me and Fabian were both talking about this. Glider Society, you fed and clothed. This guy got three meals. It's illegal not to give him three meals every day. It's illegal to not give him heat in the winter and fucking air conditioning and stuff. It's illegal not to let him take a shower, one shower a day. It's illegal to not let him get rec time and exercise every day. It's illegal not to let him have books and correspond with family members and watch TV. It's illegal to not let him have commissary eat fucking goodies and sweet things and things that taste good and savory for 31 years after he tied six people up and shot them in the back of the heads some people he would have been dead the next day in our in our land in a, cre a land we created gliders your society I, I get it you guys are very smart and you have very high IQs and you build but you do too much there's no reason for this guy to have lived and been fed and clothed and housed and sheltered for 31 years after he fucking tied six people up with bed sheets and fucking put bullets in the back of their brains. What do you guys think about that? I think I, I think uh, as uh, you know, when you're not American and you're either Hispanic or you come from another land, you got to be very careful when you're moving into some of these states where they do not have a lot of foreigners, like anywhere outside of like Los Angeles, Miami, New York, Massachusetts, you know, Boston and places like that. You don't want to live anywhere in like Huntsville, Alabama. That's too much. But this is crazy. 31 years, this guy uh, spent 31 years before they finally execute this guy. It's crazy. No. But think about it. He going to jail is not a um, bad thing for this guy. This guy was going to jail. Go ahead, Crook County. Oh, you, so uh, what's up, everybody? So anyway, what I think about it is America, right? America's way too welcoming to um outsiders and immigrants and all the other stuff and it's just crazy because a good example is um the the the, the people riding through mexico right the ones that you know the, whatever whatever the hell they was doing it don't matter but they thought that they were comfortable enough to drive through mexico and everybody in the comments on that was like bro you should have known better than to drive through mexico man what the hell are you doing but it's just like in America, you can drive through the roughest hood. You can come here. We'll feed you. We'll clothe you. We'll house you. We'll do everything for you. But it's not the same experience anywhere else, pretty much, you know? Nah, 31 years. He would have been dead. This guy wouldn't have, the way he was living his life, career criminal, he would have either been in jail for another murder or he would have been dead. I mean, if, if, if we if we were in charge, he wouldn't have made it to the next day. You say he would have been dead the next day. If we was in charge, it would have been like, all right, we about to fucking use some 
some tactics on this motherfucker tonight. Like he yeah. did it. It, it. It's over with. Like <laughs> right. Like you. Like there's no doubt he did this shit. Yeah, there's no doubt. And we would have fucking had that man hanging with tarred and feathered and we would have had waterboarding. It would have been like, we would have probably did so much shit that we wouldn't have been able to finish out our tactics and he would have died yeah, before we was done. Before we wanted him to die. Yeah, yeah, it would have been like, fuck. But Gladys <laughs> kept this guy, Gladys Society, they, and then they brag as if they've done something. Like, yeah, he's been executed. Well, nah, but you, it. but but you know how they, you know how they do this shit on death row. Like, you know, they appeal it like, Thirty like times, you know, bro. That's, and that's what that, that's part of their system. The system. Yeah, people. yeah. No, nah, we wouldn't have had that system. We, hey, low key. I think uh, if we were in charge, our shit would probably resemble in like modern society. It it would probably resemble that Russia shit, bro. Yeah, this guy. I mean, this is this is just. This you know how true. Russia, when Russia like say you guilty, you at like a ninety nine percent conviction rate, and you get like the maximum exactly. like ninety percent of the time. That exactly. that would have been us. We're harsh. We look, are harsh. Look at this family member right here. She wasn't alive when this happened. She uh, doesn't. You talking about in the back? Yeah, she doesn't look thirty one to me. No, no, no. She probably like that's a um Brita. Yeah, she is twenty three. And this woman might have been, she might have died before this guy got executed. Think about it like this. You get to live 31 years after you do this? And then Gladys poked her chest up and breath. We executed a killer today. Like, hey, but, on, hey but, but look, take this out, take this out. On <laughs> death row, though, on death row, you're not uh, living a, a, a good life in jail like everybody you're alive. else. The people you killed were died bound and gagged. But you, for the but, back there. but. In all actuality, I mean, like to give them a little bit on death row, you are locked up twenty fucking three to twenty four hours, and, and you are in the hall. Cell, and I would be in my cell jacking off the, the fucking dirty pictures and shit, and fucking doing sudokus and fucking playing fucking um doing fucking personal chess, playing fucking crossword puzzles, reading great books reading magazines writing letters to family you could find plenty of pleasure just being alive period Didn't you, I, you know what I, what's that uh that that dude from philly that's uh that uh executed the officer the uh the rookie cop he been on death yeah. row and he been like getting like fucking master's degrees and fucking yeah. everybody fighting for him and all this other shit and he got a radio show that's that that now that's fucking crazy Dude, listen, if you're alive, you can make something out of people. People, this guy was going to jail anyway. The way he was living his life, he was going to jail anyway. There's no reason to keep him alive for fucking 31 more years. Rachel yeah, we gotta we gotta put a timetable on that uh, death row shit. Yeah, man. Rachel Tovar survived a massacre that led to the deaths of four people in 1992. Six people were bound with bed sheets and shot in the back of the head. Tovar and a family friend survived. Her husband, Jose, her son, Frank Farias, her seven-month pregnant daughter-in-law, Jessica Quinones, and a family friend, Audrey Brown, were killed. Rachel Tovar identified Arthur Brown as one of three men who attacked her family. Police said this was a drug-related robbery, and Tovar said she knew Brown because he had bought drugs from her and her husband multiple times. However, Brown has always maintained his innocence, even during his final statement, saying, what is occurring here tonight is not justice. It is the murder of an innocent man for a murder that occurred in 1992. Tovar stood firm that Brown is one of the men who attacked her family. The family of Jessica Quinones also witnessed the execution and sent KPRC to a statement reading in part. Our family is at peace knowing that every doubt has been addressed and every decision has been righteous. We pray that the family of Arthur Brown Jr. will find this peace as well and that the faith of all people in our justice system will be reaffirmed. Harris County District Attorney Kim Ogg was not in office when Brown was prosecuted, but also witnessed the execution and added that Brown's claims of innocence were examined through multiple appeals. He has been the beneficiary of a judicial system that bent over backwards at the local, state, and federal level. You hear that's that? what we just that's just what that's that's exactly what I just said. <laughs> 
bends over backwards. backwards. Yeah. Hey, hey. So, um, how you feel about how you feel about the? You know, what I'm saying he did a, a heinous crime, right? So the most heinous part was he uh, he killed the seven month pregnant. She was seven months pregnant, right? But the family that he did that shit was like drug dealers, you know. How you feel I, about that? I used to be a drug dealer as far as selling weed, and people I've had my um my um spot broken into six times, and in where people took all my shit, kicked my door, and they took all my shit while I wasn't there. I've been robbed at gunpoint twice. I've been um I, I've had all types of experience. That homie steal sneak steal shit from me and shit. I've I've been through all that stuff. I know guys that have been tied up in um. And, and killed, and the girlfriend's hiding in the closet, and then the son man, as they're leaving, they hear, they hear her um, crying in the closet, and then they go and execute her. I've seen all of that stuff, man. Listen, these are people, just because you're selling weed or selling some fucking coke, doesn't make you um, a person, in my estimation, that you deserve to die, or you, yeah, you, now listen, if he would have went, and if he would have had a problem with one, one with that lady or her husband, and just shot them, that's fine. I cause shit happens in, the, in these games, drug games. You know what you're getting into. To tie the whole family up and put bullets in the back of their heads. I mean, I mean that's just evil. No, no, no. I I got it. I agree with that. It's definitely fucking heinous or whatever it is, and it's a life sentence for sure. But he, like he would he would die. listen, that guy in a village in Africa off the grid like a village not even off the grid a village in africa they would have caught him and he would have been dead within an hour with a fucking tire around his neck filled with gasoline and they would have made him they would have given him a lighter and made him light it that's what they do over there. they make you light the tire no i agree i agree i agree <laughs> So it's like imagine what they do to you and for you to light the fire. So like you know, use your imagination. Multiple appeals. He has been the beneficiary of a judicial system that bent over backwards at the local, state, and federal level, all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Marion Dudley was also convicted of these murders. He was executed in 2006. A third man, Antonia Dunson, was sentenced to life in prison. But because so another guy was executed in 2006, so that's good. So he was only alive for 14 years, and then another guy got a life sentence. Okay, so, so that's good. I mean, at least they did execute one of the guys in 2006. He only got to live the life of 14 years. But you know, if, if those people were white, the Innocence Project would have been all over that shit. Oh yeah, 